Uh, and it really is a multiplex. Right, this is going to be perfect. Look at the landing gear in here. Oh, and I quite like the look of that, if I'm brutally honest. I, I should be editing videos today, but... Do you think Matt's going to go off and go and build this one? Howdy, I'm Matt, and today is a phone day! This literally turned up, and I didn't have... And there goes my alarm! Literally turned up. Didn't have a clue what it is. I've just ripped out the label, and it because it had a German label on it, and I've just had a quick look, and we've got that little pretty picture there. I hope this is a little trainer which I bought, but I don't know. So with that said, let's just get it open. Uh, <laughs> and it shouldn't, it came via Royal Mail. It shouldn't have come via Royal Mail if it's the model which I'm thinking it is. Uh, it is! Oh wow, okay. Right, this should not have come via Royal Mail. It had a Parcel Force tracking number on it. And the poor lady over at Banggood, because it's been AWOL for literally, it's taken a month to get here, uh, which has been the longest thing so far. But you've got to be fair, there's a lot of stuff going on in the world. Uh, and it really is a multiplex. Okay, this is really curious. So, the multiplex train star. Is it train start? Yeah, I think it's the train start. It's 120 quid minimum. Uh, and this turned up on Banggood for like 30 quid or something like that, or 35 quid. It was so cheap. I actually paid the extra premium shipping to get it here, uh, which is a bit of a bummer because it went AWOL. But that aside, uh, well, it went AWOL for a period of time, but I'm sure many of you had items of, which have gone AWOL recently and then magically turned up a short time after. Anyway, it was super cheap and I always wanted a big one, um, but they were all silly expensive. And this one I wanted, <gasps> this is gonna be ace. Right, this is gonna be perfect. Look at the landing gear in here. Oh, I don't do landing gear. Right, I, I need to set the tone here, right? I, there's two reasons why I bought it. One was cheap and B, I wanted somewhere with some landing gear to muck around on the drive at home. Because uh, I don't, 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 don't normally do landing gear. And when it had Multiplex written on it, which is a premium brand, uh, I was like, ugh, this could be a bit weird. Wow. I'll tell you what, let's just get this out of the way. Uh, and we get these bits on the desk and take a look. This has... Ooh. Nice moulding. EPO foam. First impressions. Nicely moulded foam with premium plastic bits already pre-glued in. That this is super curious. This has got the 12 and 3 quarter year old Matty quite impressed already. Uh, definitely needs a bit of carbon in there, but let's not knock it until we get it going. Right, I think the oh, it looks like the build for this one's going to be just a screwdriver. How curious! Oh, I don't think I chose the plug and play kit. Uh, I just chose the whatever kit because I got plenty of electronics here, uh, and they have been in pre-applied the stickers. They are lovely ribbed wings. Uh, first inspection on the foam and the moulding is a plus. It is absolutely beautifully moulded foam. Uh, they again part of the mould is that this has definitely come out of a premium mould. Uh, and the reason why I've been is that it seems that in the cheaper moulds, uh, they don't pay for the extra tooling to cut out around the surfaces. We noticed that in, dare to say it, the film in Olga, Olga Bird. We also saw that in the Sonic model binary. As, as well nicely that moulded that foam was, uh, there was a lot left to be desired around the surfaces because you had to cut them out, especially in the, the moulded ones. Was it that one? Might, might be wrong on that one. Somebody will correct me. Uh, but yeah, first impressions, we do have a spar going through there. Oh, that's what that spar was which we took out of the box a moment ago. Oh, and it is going to be a centre wing connector as well. So push down at the front and then some form of mechanism of holding it down at the back of the fuselage. So let's get this wing. So the wingspan is about a metre or so. Uh, I'll put an update in the video description. There we go, that's been pushed together. Let's take a look at this fuselage. How curious. Very, very curious. 
Where did we last? It was the Finwing. I wonder if this came out of the same factory as the Finwing, because that you had exactly the same packaging material. And there's only a small number of factories in China which make RC models. So yeah, I'd suspect that it probably came out of the same one. Stickers applied somewhat haphazardly, but there they are in the right places, so we can't take the P too much. Uh, I was curious to see if we were going to have a multi-star sticker on the. Uh, wing, we don't have multi star, we've got something written in Chinese V2, uh, but in the photographs we did have uh, multi star written on there and it is definitely premium foam. Although, what we got in here, the nose oh, look, we got a nice little plastic firewall up in the nose uh, with the end cap held on literally with magnets. That's that's really nice. Uh, yeah, that bit there is a bit flimsy, if I'm honest. Nice area for the landing gear. It looks like we've got two positions for the landing gear. I don't know which one I'm going to go with and I'm not going to... Ah, if I push that in, it's going to stay stuck in, which is not what I want for right now. Now, where do we get in here to fit the servos and stuff? So, that is a oddity. Okay, we have holes for servos at the back, so one will be for the elevator, one will be for the rudder. That makes sense, and I'm sure we've got a bag of screws and stuff here. Yes, we do. So putting this together is going to be some fun, because uh, there were no instructions in the box, but let's face it, it's not really rocket science. This, this is literally just going to slot together. So if I push that in there, oh look, let me show you, let me zoom in. It's just a nice little touch. Have we zoomed in enough? We are indeed. So in the back of the tail we have a plastic plate which has already been pre-glued and then on the uh, elevator fin which needs the stickers sticking down is that that just slots in there and the tail section just pops in the top and I'm guessing it's, oh it's only a single screw which is going to hold the tail section on, that's going to be absolutely adequate. Uh, oh we do need to go careful uh, is that when I put this together is that I need to make sure that I do put the tail wheel in there so that we have, uh, with the rudder, is that we're able to make it steerable. That is a nice touch, you'll see there. So imagine the rudder servo moving the uh, rudder, funny enough, uh, is that it will move the tail wheel and they have put a bend in the tail wheel as well to take a bit of the shock. Uh, that is done on there really tightly. Oh, okay, small details, small details. Right, so we'll put that for there for a moment and put that out of the way. Right, the challenge here is getting the electronics in it. And we, ah, oh, does this come off? Is that stuck? How's that? Come on. Oh, nice magnets. Right. Okay, right, I was a little bit worried, like how on earth am I going to put a receiver and stuff in here? So what I'm going to have to do, because it's definitely going to be, a, right, the one challenge for this one is actually getting the wires through the body of the model. So what I'll do is that I've got a long um, poking wire in short and I'll poke the wire down through the fuselage uh, and try and fish it out here so then I can drag cables through connect the servos up. Now, just a real serious point, when you put your servos in uh, and you have to use extension leads, is that when you put your servos together, make sure you get some black insert, or in fact, any sellotape, that's it, that might have to be in this installation tape, any sellotape, wrap that around the servo connector to make sure, God forbid, uh, you can imagine over a collection of landings, uh, over and over and over again, they may come apart, and because they're in the middle of a model, there would be an absolute nightmare to get in there, so just wrap a bit of sellotape around it, and then you know for sure that those wires are not popping out, that connector's never coming undone. Um, so, yeah, first impressions, Pretty cool. Uh, I'm not going to go, uh, it's always famous last words, isn't it? Uh, I'm not going to go mental on the uh, motor. I'll, I'll just put something sensible in there. I will go slightly lower KV. Uh, uh, a nice choice would be something around, I don't know, uh, 1200 KV, 1400 at a push, uh, maybe 1100 KV. And now we don't need. Uh, a massive motor in the front of this one. It, it doesn't weigh a lot, and because of the high wing and the trainer style model as well, it should have some sensible flight characteristics. The one curiosity which we have is around the wing re uh, restrict. Ah, it's too. Oh, okay. So, uh, 
get to my point was that the one curiosity which I had was a rat. Look how thick those are. Okay, uh, again, uh, it's the small details. That is the control horn, and we got the uh, push rods in there as well. That's not a normal one. That is a definitely a thicker than normal uh, control horn, which is obviously is nice to see. Uh, also in the bag, we get the control horns, a tiny bit of Velcro. Oh, and we get the nice little screw in. There's me trying to show you for a bag. Let me get one out. Is that we also get the nice little uh, clevis tools as well, so it makes it super easy for us to, and there goes my alarm. One of those, those go into our control horns uh, and they're nice little clevis tools so it makes adjusting, if you want to put manual trim into the model, a lot, lot easier. And the other bit which I wanted out of here was this. So this goes, ah, that's our wing joiner. So I assume that goes in the wrong way around. <laughs> uh, right, and then, ah, nice. Okay, I like that. That should be quite robust. In the top of the fuselage, we have two holes and a plastic plate. Our wing should then slot in and then provide, again, I'm running out of desk. You can see the state of my desk at the moment. I've got so many projects on the boil, but I'm kind of thinking this one should be quite a quick one to do. Uh, and then that should, we said, that should sit in there. And then these are our wing clips, which need to go in one way or another. I'm like a, I'm bound to have stuck those in the wrong way. And they should click round, it says. Also, I'm not gonna force that, but those should click round and then restrain the wing on the top of the model. So yeah, first impressions. That's better than what I expected because I really didn't pay a lot of money for it. I paid, well this was less than half a price of a standard one. And I've seen the multiplex ones, they are, the bigger ones and they are really really nice and this is definitely a baby version but for something for me to smash around out on the drive uh, with the kids I think that's pretty good cool and I like I said it wasn't a lot of money I'll say 40 quid all in and I quite like the look of that if I'm brutally honest I, I should be editing videos today but do you think Matt's gonna go off and go and build this one because it's not hard. I've got to chuck two servos in the back. I've got to chuck some servos in the wing. It's, I'm gonna have this done in 20 minutes. I think all in, I am gonna have this done in 20 minutes. I quite like it. Right, let's go and build it. Right, by the magic of the video editing, I'll be back to you with this build now. Okay, just a quick tip for when you build yours or you ever get in the same situation. Uh, in short, it's a tiny little hole which goes underneath here, and I, had, I struggled getting, just to get some flexible cable to go through. But in the, in the end, I managed to fish it through for a screwdriver and the main spar which they provided. Uh, and what I've been and done, you'll see that we've got a black cable going out the right hand side, and I've been and attached that to one servo wire. And then the red cable, I've also pushed that through, and I've sellotaped that together as well. So when I now pull this through, the fuselage, so I'm going careful, is that I'm not only pulling through the black wire which has got one servo attached to it, is that when it get round to the red wire, we'll then pull the other servo through as well, so I can do both at the same time. Instead of having to fish one wire down there twice, I've got one wire down there, uh, and I'll do them in both in one go. Uh, also, I, this there was lots of foam up here in the top, section in here uh, and I've literally just stuck the craft knife in there because I need to get in there to A connect up the servo wires for the receiver uh, and B for the aileron servos too. So that's where I am right now it, and all I've done is just stick some hot glue in the bottom of those servos, centre them up. Uh, that's just going to be a two minute job just to put a bit of sellotape over the top. I'm, I've got to be a bit realistic, I'm a good 10 minutes already, although I've just stopped here just to pull these cables through, uh, and you'll now see me just gingerly pulling them through. There we go, and make sure they go in the right way round. And like so, come on. I don't wanna do exactly what I just did. <laughs> Ah, uh, typical Matt. Uh, so I've been and pulled that one off too tightly, so what I'm now gonna go and do uh, is feed the cable back out this side here, like so, and then I'll reattach the wire to that properly, because it wasn't a very good job, I'll properly hook that round there and then pull it through, and then we'll get it finished. So yeah, 10 minutes in, bit awkward, 
but it's not rocket science, you just need to persevere with it. So, happy days. And she's built! Now, I've got to be honest with you, I'm actually recording this after I've been out and flown it, and there might be a telltale love bite just here on the wing. So let me just quickly go through the setup which I went for. I've got my receiver in there, digging that out with just the craft knife so we can get the receiver in there. It makes things a lot easier. Don't forget to pack the thumb screws. I kind of forgot to take mine to the flight line for the day when I went out to fly it. So when you see part two, you'll notice there's some pink tape on the back of this. And actually there's a bit of pink tape underneath there, just hold the wings together. That's because I left the wing joiners literally right here on the desk and then went out flying. Hey ho! Anyway, uh, moving forwards, I have a 30 amp ESC in here and I have a 2212 1400 kV motor uh, in the nose. Now the centre of gravity, which I went for, is that I will get the ruler, and this worked out perfectly for the maiden, uh, and look out for part two, uh, is that the centre of gravity is two inches from the leading edge. So from right up there on that leading edge, it's two inches in, uh, and for those of you in metric, is about 48 millimeters from the leading edge is where I've got the center of gravity for mine, and that was absolutely perfect. I only ran a 1300 3S battery in mine with a eight by four uh, slow fi propeller, and it went like an absolute rocket ship. And what I'll do, I'll put all the parts which I use down in the video description if you want to replicate the uh, setup which I've got. And when you see part two, you'll see that it goes like an absolute rocket ship. Seriously impressed with it. Uh, I can't believe I paid so little money for what is, it, it's, it's a baby version of a fun cup. The big fun cup, which is 1.4 meters, is literally 120 quid. This was less than half that money. Uh, and when you see part two for the maiden, Thumbs up, double thumbs up. Oh, and the landing gear was super easy. It will click in, like so, as it's just been clicked in, but it will come back out again. Uh, I also ran my landing gear on the second hole back, uh, and that worked out best for me. Uh, and I also ended up with a tiny bit of up trim. Let me show you there. A tiny bit of up trim in my elevator. That might be because I'm running a little bit nose heavy. I've got to be honest with you, I did stick a little lump of lead up the nose just to make sure this model was nose heavy because tail heavy models are definitely no fun. So if you would like to see the maiden of this model, and again, I'm giving you big hints, I have already been and flown it, it is really good. Uh, don't forget to press the red subscribe button underneath this video, and of course, press the bell notification so that YouTube notifies you when the next video out, because it could quite well be the maiden of this model. Uh, and actually, ironically, I have just already finished editing that video, uh, and I've got to do this video so we can look at this one first and then go and see the maiden afterwards. So it literally will be in the next day or so. Uh, obviously, if you're watching this a couple of months on, uh, it'll probably be the suggested video at the end. Uh, so yeah, first impressions, which are when I was here at the workbench, was that as you could tell, I was quite excited. Second impressions after I've been out and flown it, you need to watch that Maiden video because there's a very happy mat on the flight line and I throw it round like an absolute tool and I really, really did enjoy it. So yeah, this one's secretly gonna hide up there on the side, uh, and because it's so small, uh, it will fit in the back of the, my MX-5, so I've got no excuse to take it with me uh, on a flying day. Maybe I might even set it up for a bit of FPV, just for a bit of fun touch and go landing and just really muck around with it. And by the way, that sounds strange, for, may say it sounds strange for you, this is a trainer model, uh, and is maybe more meant for a beginner, but that doesn't stop a more experienced pilot just having some fun literally just smashing it around the sky and because it was so cheap I frankly do not care um, but I have enjoyed it a lot so there you go that is an overview to the fun cub 1.1 meter high wing trainer aircraft 
look out for the maiden video it's coming up very shortly so with that said if you have any let me put this one down safely if you have any questions or comments about this model just let me know in the comments section underneath this video and of course a big thank you to you for taking the time to join me here at the workbench to look at this model i think it's pretty cool oh by the way i will include a link to this in the video description for you i did buy this one out of my own money the link will be an affiliate link so if you use that you will be supporting this channel remember something which i'm always 100 percent open and transparent about and uh, yeah did genuinely really really enjoy it look out for the maiden video i have so much fun with it it's unreal anyway for myself matt as always cheerios